Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on an increasingly popular reel. It's the small frame lever drags. Uh, Yvette makes them and others. This one is by Canyon Reels. They're out of New Jersey. And uh, I'm not sure where it's manufactured. I'm going to assume it's manufactured overseas. Uh, this one is the Inshore Series, the HS15. And it's a lever, lever drag uh, reel. Very popular with a lot of folks, uh, particularly braid fishermen. You just take what used to be a very big reel and reduce it down in size. Uh, not that this is the example of it, but you you would take something that used to be very heavy uh, with heavy monofilament line, and now you're down to 80 pound braid on a small frame with a capacity of uh, 450 yards of 40 pound braid. So we're going to take this apart. We'll show you uh, how it's made, how to service it and uh, hopefully we'll get this one back uh, fishing again. So we're going to start by taking off the handle. That's a common piece that I do. This one's got a Phillips head screw. That's the lock num lock locking screw on the piece. It also has a through screw so if you uh, if you wind up with some trouble go to the screwdriver. There we go. I got it loose. I just didn't know it. Okay we'll pull that out. You'll notice as we're doing this that I wear a protective glove on my hand to uh, keep the lubricants and, and dirt and grime and the like off of my hand. And also that I use a parts tray, tray behind me. <coughs> Excuse me. The uh, parts tray just keeps everything in one place so that when I go to reassemble a reel I know where to look for it. So right now I'm just taking off that locking ring. And that one looks like we have a, a 10 millimeter a nut here. I'm going to take that off. So these have become very popular as I mentioned in, in my opening. I'm seeing a lot more of these come in now. Um, they're pretty, pretty watertight. They seem to hold up very well. And uh, every now and then folks just uh, bring them in for the tune-up. That's what we have today. But for some reason I'm having difficulty finding my, my 10 millimeter, but it's here somewhere and it will be a 10 millimeter. There we go. And that's why I like to keep everything right at hand. I don't have to remove the uh, glove and go searching in a bin somewhere for that. All right, so it's got a leveraged handle. You can bring it in short or you can, uh, you can have it on a long lever. This one's on a long lever. And then we have, uh, I think they're called Torx screws. I bought a case of uh, miscellaneous bits, and this is a snap-on uh, ratcheting screwdriver. But uh, this is an assortment of bits. I would recommend that if you do a lot of the, this type of work, that you keep them. It has everything from hex and torque and uh, the like, and small, as well as some small flat-bladed screwdrivers in that. And uh, I've already gone ahead and found the right one before we we're going to start this exercise. I like this one because you can hold the the grip and just turn it with the uh, the finger grabbers, the little mesh. And there's three case screws as best I can tell. Now I went online to try and find the schematic. I didn't find the schematic. I did find that, uh, that the company is out of Brick, New Jersey and for $29.99 plus uh, postage you can uh, have them service the reel. They'll take it apart and do what I'm doing here. Uh, the $29 does not include the postage. Okay, so we should be able to just lift this off now. Yep, we, I should have assumed as much. Most lever drag wheels have a, a spool nut on it. So here we go, we'll take that off. Underneath I'm noting that um, there's a spring associated with it. And I'm gonna just set that down accordingly. One of the things you wanna do if you, um, if you don't know the reel is you want to make sure that uh, you take pictures along the way, particularly in this case where we don't have a schematic. Okay, the lever arm comes up next. Now we should be able to pull the reel. So the reel is a pretty simple reel in that regard. It has a um, top, top part of this is the pressure plate that holds the drag assembly. We have the smaller spool gear. We have the larger main drag gear main drag gear should just push out. I just noticed as I pushed it out that there was two washers on this side of the bearing. I'm going to just push that out. We have a bigger bearing below. We have a bearing on the spool gear. 
and then we have the adjuster. So I'm just going to put the bearing back into the slot here. That slot is clean, I just noticed. We also have a bearing on this side, so three bearings, four bearings, probably five bearings in this wheel by the time we get done. Okay, so I'm just going to clean out this. You notice there's some debris in the channel here, so I'm going to grab a, a paper towel. Just wipe that clean. And then we can just go ahead and lube some of that. I'm going to use a Pen Precision Real Grease. And somebody got me started on the, the brush. This is a good application for a brush. A lot of times I do use the, uh, the screwdriver, but in here, in this case, we'll use the brush. That's going to get the back of this gear set here. I'm going to put a little bit on the gear shaft as well and put a little bit into the gear teeth. While I'm doing that gear teeth, I'm checking the teeth. I don't expect to see any problems here, but I am checking the teeth to make sure that they're uniform, not chipped or cracked. Okay, so we're going to set that off to the side. We then have the spool gear assembly. I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing here, lube up the, the spool gear. Drop that back into place. Just looking to seat that bearing in here. So we've just seated the bearing in. Now we can put the main gear drive in. And there's a little clip typical of these. And then we're going to put some oil on these bearings. Drop the oil on that side, drop the oil on the case bearing behind. Give it a spin to make sure everything's working properly, which it is. And then this little gear plate here, sitting on the top like that. It can also be just placed on here. Either way, it's going to work fine. Spool now. The spool on the back doesn't have much. These two are we'll make sure that we keep these and not lose these. These are the two little washers that came off of the handle side of the, the equation. This is just a nest for the, the back end of this. So we'll pull the back end. The spool shaft should remove the Top bearing, the spool shaft should push through. We just had a little shot here. This is the top end spring. You got to be careful. That's one of the reasons why I say to take the pictures along the way. It's the back end bearing. And make sure we oil that. Again, I'm going to use a, uh, in this case, a Pen Precision Real Oil for that. Let's put that right back in. There's a bearing inside the spool. I'll put that bearing there and we can put the adjuster spring on. Then we seat the next bearing. And then we have a C-clip on the, the main drag washer here. So we're just going to pull that We'll put a little bit of grease back on that. Big C-clip. Hold on to it, they can fly. I'm just going to put that in my parts tray so I don't lose it. And we can pick up that washer. I like to use a utility knife blade, it's very thin. clean under the washer and we'll give this a fresh lube here. There is a little bit of sticking you may be able to see on this one. I'm going to go use some Cal's Universal Dry Grease here. Just a little bit on both. And this is where I'll use my gloved hand actually as a tool. I'm going to rub that grease in. The idea is to keep it flexible. You don't over grease the dry washers, but you do want to keep them flexible. You can see a nice coating 
across both sides and then wipe off the excess with a paper towel and then you can reinstall. Which I'm going to do right now. And then we're ready just to reinstall the reel then. So this came off easy enough. I'm going to put this back in. You want to make sure that you're you wrap tight here. I can't tell you how many reels I get, get in here. The fellows tell me that the reel stopped spinning and they didn't realize when they had it apart that they lost the, the uh, well like here, like the line just got trapped in the case and they didn't realize that and uh, panicked and, uh, and sent me the reel. So just make sure you check as you put it in both sides of the reel, but uh, you can generally tell if you, if you can spin it by hand now generally okay which is what we're doing here okay so now we're going to just grab the, the face plate now and put that back in and grab those oops see that's the this is the value of a parts tray I just looked at my parts tray and didn't put that C clip back on so folks ask me you know want to just lay it out on the desk or whatever Yes, I would have found it that way, but it's so much easier just to, to do it that way. Of course, I got everything backwards now. I just keep wanting to lose everything here now. there and I lubed it up so good it keeps wanting to fall out of the case is what's going on now so I'm just going to lay that down and we can uh, do it. I think it's easier if you do it onto the spool gear the bearing is now inside the rider there I'll try that again so I very rarely cut and splice my videos as those of you that watch know uh, I don't pretend to be uh, one one stop do it right all the time Superman I'm not what you see is what you get here but I, I like to use the, the little mistakes I make on cameras as kind of learning points for everybody that you can do this too so whether you forget that C clip or you have the gear pop out on you or whatever it is uh, it's kind of minimum stuff but uh, just to emphasize that uh, uh, it's not that hard. Don't be intimidated by it. Okay, now I have the case set. I'm going to grab those case screws. So a nice little solid reel here. There's uh, every reason in the world to believe that uh, they've got a, a good reputation. I, I think that they're in the $250 to $300 range for this size reel. Okay, so tighten down that last screw then. We got one more here. And we're going to set the other piece up here. And we got the arm goes on. And then we have the adjuster beneath that. And then we have the screw. Or the nut rather, it's a nut with the let's check the swing. That seems about right. You want to check when you do this, you want to make sure that you have the free spool and free spool and that as you accelerate your lever drag and turn the spool that you have your shaft moving that's kind of how you know that the, uh, the the piece is set right just going to take the moment here just to tighten these screws down one more time okay we had those two little rings fall off the uh, the end of the shaft here so the first one is kind of a, a shield for the bearing the second one was a, a square that uh, sat over the shaft Get those two on. We'll put the handle on there. And those of you that watch know this is the 
time to go get a cup of coffee because I have a little bit of trouble with these small pieces of parts. I'm thinking that there's one preferred way here on this square. There we go. Squares on. We remember we had it on the longer throw. So we'll go ahead and put that on. We have our 10 millimeter nut cap. Tighten that down. And we need to line up that little lock tab off a little bit. I like these because you can actually still grab the nut while you're lining it up. Make sure that you have that hole aligned for the lock lock nut. We can put that little screw in that started this whole adventure. And again me and my little pieces of parts here. So I like these form functions. I happen to have one. I have a, another one. I'll, I don't want to call them off brand, but let's call it the second tier. Uh, like I said, against the Avets or the Shimano's or the like. There's a, uh, a second tier out there that are a little bit more affordable, but still have the right feature and function. I have one called the Poseidon, and uh, I have that attached to a Jigging World just put a little grease on there to hold the screw and uh, love it love it it's lightweight you can fish all day with it and uh, here you go so let's give it a go see how we're doing get nice uh, get the free spool going part way on the lever drag and full throw and not moving this is it's a nice reel so this one will go back uh, to its owner and hopefully it'll be in time for him to go catch some blackfish and uh, go jig off the rocks uh, in the mid-Atlantic coast here. So with that, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to see videos like this, please subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you want to see more, drop me a line if, uh, if you have a reel that I haven't done and I'll add it to my list. Again, thank you for watching. Have a good day.